very, very windy rookery waters in Cambridgeshire today. And what I'm going to be talking about is my top five tips for catching fish like these in windy conditions. So the first tip and one of the most important things when you're fishing in the wind is to be able to fish accurately. So to do this, it's important to pick your swim and where you're actually fishing in your swim very carefully. One thing that I always try and do is fish as close to myself as possible, particularly to start early on in the day. So today I've chosen to fish at around six meters, top six of my pole. The reason I've started there is because I can hold my rig nice and still there, but also it gives me the option to move slightly further out in the day if I need to. If I was to go out and start at the max of where I could hold, I then have nowhere else to go. So I've started at around six meters today and luckily we've gone in and we've got some bite straight away. And then when it tails off, I can always add a section. The also, the other important thing is positioning of actually where I'm gonna fish based on sort of the way the wind's blowing. So today I've got the wind blowing from right to left across my ear and I've turned my body slightly to the right into the wind. The reason why I've done this is it helps me hold my pole still and it stops the wind from being completely side on. But another thing I've done is I haven't turned all the way into the wind so that the rig's gonna blow under my pole tip. And I'll show you this a bit later, but what that does is it means I can hold my rig right on top of my bait and still remain ultimately accurate, which is really important when targeting fish like F1s and carp on these sort of venues. So rig choice for when you're fishing in the wind, it's very important to try and get away with a light float still as light as you possibly can. I do a lot of this sort of fishing and the more and more times I try and get away with positive rigs and stuff like that during the winter, you just get less bites. So I'm gonna try all the time to go as light as I physically can on my rig, as long as I can still hold it still. So starting with the top of my rig, I've got blue hydroelastic today. We're on the J Lake today at Rookery Waters and there's some quality fish in this lake, some big carp as well as the F1. So I can't go too light on the elastic and run the risk of losing a few of them bonus fish. So blue hydro is about perfect for that. Main line is just my standard main line, 015 Guru Engage, nice and strong, nice and durable. Now here's a crucial part of this rig. I've got probably just over a foot of line, 14 inches of line between float and pole tip. You don't want to go too long on the length of line, especially when it's windy like this and the rig's blowing about. If, you're, if you have too long a length of line, your rig just won't be sitting accurate over your bait, but you also have to have a long enough line so you're not dragging your float around. I find 12 to 14 inches about perfect, to be honest. And then the back shot. Now, on my rig, I have positioned my back shot a little bit closer to my pole tip than I do to my float. And this again is really important in the wind because it means I can drop my back shot actually under the water, keep everything nice and still, stop dragging my float around, but also I'm not going to sink my float by having my back shot slightly closer to the pole tip. Really, really important. And today it's took three number eight cubes in order to create that L shape in my line which holds everything nice and still. The float, like I say, still nice and light, a 4x12 Maggie. The depth here is around four foot. So four by 12 is very light, even in four foot of water, especially when it's windy like this. But today it's actually sat nice and still. We've not had any problems by having that length of line correct and the back shot choice. So get that right and you can get away with a lighter float like this. And this Maggie float, because we're gonna fish maggots today, is absolutely perfect for the job. Shot in pattern. Because we're only in four foot of water today, I've just gone for a bulk and one dropper. So I've got a bulk at 12 inches away from the hook. They're number 10s. So we've got six number 10s in a bulk there. And then I've got one dropper situated above my five inch hook length. And my hook length's 011 engage. And I've got a 20 F1 pellet hook, which should allow me to get in anything I'm likely to hook today here at Rookery Waters. So my next tip, and something that confuses a lot of anglers when it's windy like this, is how much line do you put on the bottom? Now, here today at Rookery Waters, there's a lot of F1s, and I tend to find if you lay too much line on the bottom for fish like F1s, you just won't see the bites. So there definitely is a fine line between getting this wrong and getting it bang on. What I'd always suggest is plumb up as usual. So as I've shown you earlier on, bottom of the body of the float, 
put a little mark on your pole. So I just use like a China marker. I've got a yellow China marker to put a nice little mark. So plumb up to the bottom of the body. I put my mark at the bottom of the body. And then if I want to add some line, I'll go out, I'll test my rig. If everything's sat okay, I won't you know, add any line on. If I go in and I feel like I need a little bit more line on the bottom, I'll just add 10 mil and try it. And I'll just slowly, if I need to, add a little bit more depth until I feel like everything's critically where that is the minimum amount of line I can put on the bottom to get good presentation. And that is how I'll have it. And I can always change if the wind drops again by having that little mark, I can move it down, up, just try and get away with as little as possible on the bottom when there's a few F1s in like there is here today. So my fourth tip for when you're fishing in windy conditions like this is about feeding accurately. Now it's very, very important when you're fishing in conditions like this that you keep everything still very, very accurate. It's quite easy to try and loose feed and spread your bait out and you just end up with a peg where you've got bait everywhere and you're not really sure where everything is. So I always try and feed just with a small pole pot and it's important to use a small pole pot because you tend to find if you try and fish with big pole pots on it's windy, it blows about all over the place. So I tend to like to have two little pots that take the correct amount of bait. I can fill them up, tap them all in in one go. I'm not going to spill bait all over my peg and things like that. And it just means everything's nice and accurate. So the two that I use, I firstly got a small Guru pole pot. And now this has got the sprinkle lid on, but what I've actually done is cut the holes out so that I can literally pop sort of 12 to 15 maggots in this pot and tap them all out in one go. When you're fishing venues that are quite shallow, like here today, it's probably only four foot on this lake. That's normally a good amount of bait to feed. And I tend to sort of go to that in any places where, like I say, up to four foot deep or if I'm fishing across, things like that down the edge. That's the perfect pot for that. And then this slightly bigger pot, which is a small Preston pot, one of the old small Preston pots. This takes sort of 25 to 30 maggots, so quite a little bit more bait. And when I'm fishing in slightly deeper pegs, five, six foot of water, that tends to be the better amount to feed. And just by putting that nice and on the end of my pole, taking my time, tapping it in nice and low to the water, I can still be very, very accurate, even when the conditions are not very favorable like today. So my final tip is something that I actually touched on earlier when I talked about the rig, but I really wanted to re-emphasize this point because I think it's absolutely vital to get this right in order to achieve good presentation, and that's your back shot. So firstly, the number of back shot I choose to use. I always try and get away with the smallest amount that I can in order to create a right angle in my line, as that's going to stop the, the line getting blue and moving my float out of place. So. Today, I've had to use three number eight in order to create this, but I'm not actually scared of going bigger than that if needs be, four or five or six, if it's really, really windy, or I could cut that down to one or two when it's slightly better conditions. But today, three has been the optimum. And also, placing the back shot closer to your pole tip than your float so that I can dunk my pole down quite low and it's gonna stop me from moving my rig around. If you have the back shot too close, you mean, it means you have to lift your pole a little bit higher and when your pole blows around, you'll be dragging your float out of place and it's bad for your presentation. So by getting that right, getting your back shot a little bit closer to your pole than what it is your float, getting the right amount of back shot so you've got that right angle, you can get your float to sit there absolutely lovely and get loads of bites even when it's very, very difficult to get good presentation like it is today. So I hope them tips have helped explain how to get the best out of windy situations like today. We've had a brilliant day's fishing here at Rookery Waters today. We've had bites all day. You tend to find that when it's windy like this, there's plenty of fish moving about and willing to come to some feed. So don't let it put you off. Use these tips what I've shown you and you can have some great sport during the winter months.